Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. Uh, again, in a prior episode, I showed using Inkscape to solve sort of a complex problem. I'm going to show you another one today here because uh, I, I want to replicate this piece and actually I want to create a couple different hybrid versions of this piece. Now, a couple different p things about this. Number one, it might look symmetrical, however it's not. You can see these center holes here are closer to the front than here. So the mounting is asymmetrical, while the, um, the uh, vibration holes are, are symmetrical. And the thing is, i got this big circle in the middle, and I don't want this. So what I'm going to do, and what I've already done, is I've traced this out. Now, the other piece here, too, notice this is white. So if I go to scan this, now I could just probably plop this down and scan it. It's not going to scan very well because it's white, and I don't want to paint it because I want to put this part back. Um, so this is a good op you know good solution is again I can uh, again trace this out on the paper like I've done and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan this and I'm going to import this into uh, Inkscape and then what I'm going to do is have Inkscape trace this for me and then I can create an SVG file which I can import into my 2 or 3D program. So tell you what let's go meet over at the computer I'm going to scan this and we'll meet there and I'll show you how you do all this and again this just saves a ton of time when when trying to uh, design parts or replicate parts that you already have modify them because that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to create a couple hybrid versions of this and so this is why I need this part. All right, let's head over there. All right, here we are back in Inkscape. So I've scanned the part and that we did the tracing of and I have it in Inkscape. So now what I'm going to do is come up here to path, trace bitmap, and I'm just going to use the stock settings of this that you see over here. Uh, because it is a piece of line art, so pretty simple, and that's one nice thing about tracing it. You don't have a lot of the shadows in that stuff to deal with. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to click OK. You've seen it flash over there a little bit. I'm going to close this, and then now what I'm going to do is move this over. Now I have two copies. One is the actual image, and one is the bitmap. Sometimes folks get, get confused on which one's which, so here's an easy way to tell. Go up here and select this tool, Edit Path Nodes, and then click one. So you click this one, see what happens? Nothing. Go ahead and click this one. Ah, uh, well, okay, have that selected. There you go. You see, you have the past. Now, one of the things that we can also do is um, we we can, if we hold the right button here, we can zoom in. So we didn't hold the right button here. Let me go back up here to view. So I want to zoom in. Okay, we're being difficult this morning. So zoom in is plus, and so. What I'm going to do is zoom right in because there's a couple pieces of this that were, were maybe a little bit rough right up around here. You see see this joint right here? So what, what we can do is we can use this tool to actually clean up some of these. And I'm not going to get too overly picky about this because I am going to, in my CAM program, I'm going to tell it to cut to the outside. So... Uh, at the resolution I'm going to be operating on, it's not going to be really a problem. So let's just get some of this inside. So let's zoom up on this a little bit more because I want to get this little piece inside. So I'm more so trying to get the pieces, um, and unfortunately it wants to be a curve. And so I'm just kind of pulling, trying to pull these pieces together and uh, a little bit like that. That's fine. Uh, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trace to the outside and there's going to be just a certain amount of, um, whoops, I keep forgetting the keystrokes. And, and again, this is where if you want to do a really good job in your tracing now, uh, and again, it really depends on what you're going to do with it. I'm just looking at the little rest of the tracings, and they all seem to be okay. Because remember, I'm going to see and see this, so it does not have to be hugely perfect. Because I'm going to use a three millimeter uh, end bit to do the cutting, and so um, I'll have a little bit of leeway, so it won't matter. All right, so I'm going to go back here, click that. So you see, we have the outside because I'm going to set the the cut for the outside. I can maybe clean this up a little bit, but that's perfectly fine. I'm going to also dump the uh, JPEG image or actually PNG image as I brought it in as and then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to replicate this because I want two copies of this because they're going to be a mated pair and I want to line this up up over here because what I want to do uh, is I want to 
do a little bit of aligning. I want to just make sure, just uh, grins and giggles, uh, that I align this a little bit. And let's find alignment. There we go. We got these aligned. So I want to do rough alignment. I don't have to be 100% here, but I want to be pretty close to 100% uh, where I set this up at. And so, all right, roughly right about there. Because one of the things I'm going to do is on this one, I am going to create a small circle because I need to create um, a bit of an opening. And I'm at pixels, so I'm going to switch to millimeters. And height and width, I am going to go uh, 6.2. I need to spit this out here. 6.27, I need to get this number right. And then I need to go 6.27 also here. So uh, for those of you good at your conversion, this is roughly a one quarter inch hole. So I can actually insert a quarter inch nylon bolt in here to hold a camera. All right, so there I have that. Now, I really don't have to, because I'm going to import it, and it's going to be part of my SVGA object, or my actual, I'm going to export this as an EPS. Um, it's going to be there, so I can, you know, just in my CAM program address it there. So I'm not going to worry about any type of Boolean operations here with unions and subtractions. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, and I am going to... Uh, export a copy or save a copy of this as and instead of SVGA I am going to utilize EPS because uh, my CAM program likes EPS and then what I'm going to do is um, CNC EPS so I've got a regular file folder set out on my NAS for this I'm going to save this I'm going to save all this now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and cut 2D so I'm going to create a new file and uh, my working is going to be roughly, I'm going to say, uh, whoops, I want my width to be roughly 300, so roughly about uh, 12, eh, I'm going to go a little bit smaller, I'm going to go probably 250. And then I go, I'm going to go a height of about uh, 200, and then I can adjust this from here. My material is, uh, ah, it's already 2.6, so that's good. I'm in millimeters, that's good. And I'm going to click OK. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to import. Okay, so we're going to go and we're going to do import. And we're going to import gimbal. And we're going to say OK. And so here we go. Here we have our gimbals, our gimbal plates. And we pull these in. I want to adjust them a little bit away from the sides. There we go. So that's a little bit away from the sides. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to select the uh, inner hole. So I'm going to select the inner hole on these. And you notice that because it uh, actually traced both the inside and the outside of the line, which is fine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to cut these holes out. And then what I'm going to do is go up here to my tool path. And I'm going to say, no, I don't want a pocket. I want to create a tool path. And then what I want to do is I want to select my tool. And then what I want to do is find the right tool. And okay, the three millimeter single flute is going to be the tool I'm going to use to cut these out. And boom, I didn't calculate and it went away. So I got to have to um, holes one. And I'm going to calculate this. And uh, I want to see my cut distance. My cut distance three is 2.7. So I'm going to say okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and then I'm going to say. Do a similar operation. Now I got a little bit dis distracted because I was thinking about you guys and explaining this, so I should have selected these also. However, I'm going to do these as a separate job, but similar job. So I'm going to again go back here. I'm going to create a tool path. Uh, notice I'm cutting on the outside. Actually, I want to change that. I want to cut to the inside, and I'm going to change this to holes two, and then I'm going to calculate. And yes, I'm going to cut through. 
Now, one of the things I want uh, I want to happen is I need to go back to holes one, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trade change it to the inside, and then I'm going to recalculate my tool path so they match. The reason I do, I do that is I want to hold kind of true to the size of the hole rather than cutting on the outside of the hole. Um, hopefully that makes sense, but if you're experienced with CNC, you know what I'm getting at. So now in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these and I'm only going to do it on one uh, is I'm going to peg drill because I only need these body mounting holes on one. And so boom, I've got that. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to go over here and I see my create drilling tool path. That's what we're going to do. So cut depth, I'm going to make this again 2.7 and I think everything else I want to make sure I select my correct tool which I didn't have it selected is going to be the single flute cutter and then I'm going to say OK and then I'm going to click calculate yes it's going to cut through so now what's going to happen is we're going to peck drill these and so this is where I really don't care about getting too precise on uh, a number of these gyrations because I'm going to make up for those sins in my tooling methodology if you will so now the next thing we need to do is actually cut these guys out. So I've come through here. Actually, I want to see if I can click the outside. I'm going to deselect this. I want to zoom in a little bit. I want to I want to select the, get the outside selected, and I've got that. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to again cut here. As you see, we have our single flute. We're going to go at a depth of 2.7. Now. Um, I'm really not going to use tabs. I'm not a huge fan of tabs, um, and, but it depends on what I'm cutting. This isn't going to be huge precision stuff, so this is okay. Um, but you do have to be careful because the machine can throw the part, uh, but most of the time I, I don't have a problem with it uh, because the, it usually holds to the last pass anyway. So I'm going to do cut out one and then I'm going to click calculate and yes I know I'm going to cut through the material which is my intention and then I'm going to come back here again zoom in and then click the outside and then really kind of click the outside because I didn't mean to click the inside alright same thing here uh, again I'm going to come back here tool path on the inside whoops I want to do the outside big tip here make sure you keep track of where your tool path is heading inside or outside um, I've, I've ruined enough parts by messing that up and you don't want to do that you want to pay attention to it um, so again doing the video I get a little bit distracted sometimes because I'm looking at volume meters and things like that but you don't want to screw that up so I have to go back and fix the other one like I did here but for now I'm just going to call this uh, cutout 2 and I'm going to calculate this and yes I'm going to cut through the material and then boom uh, but I am going to go back here to cut out one, and I'm going to change that to the outside. And this will, again, will help. This is another interesting tip. So by cutting to the outside, it's going to help with some of those sins of the lines not being really perfect. And so that's okay. That's how I'm kind of covering up and making this very fast. Because actually, if I didn't make the video for this, I would be done already. It, it actually moves along pretty quick because this is uh, typically how I do a lot of this stuff. Uh, so, but I'm going to go back to the outside, I'm going to change this, I'm going to recalculate, and then boom. So, we have these two pieces set up. So now we're ready to go cut these out. Um, you notice because the peck drilling over here, we really don't see the shape. Um, however, you can see the targets for the peck drill, and so that's a good thing. So, kind of long story short, what we're going to do is we're going to save this code off. Now, the thing is... We want to output all the tool paths to one file. We see all of our tool paths here, which match up here, which is a good thing. Now I'm going to use the post processor for my 3040, because we're going to use the 3040 CNC. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to save the tool paths. And what I'm going to do is I've got a drop file uh, on my NAS. And then what I do is I put it here. This is, it lets me rename it. And I'm going to call this uh, Gimbal. And I typically like to give things a version, so this is version 1, so if I screw up, you can see here versions on the uh, file for other things that I've done. So I, I kind of keep track, and I'm not recutting the same part I screwed up before. 
So I'm going to click Save, and now this is going to be saved out. Now, what I do with that, since my, my, the computer that runs my machine is also connected to the NAS, I can just upload that G code file. So I'm doing this in my office, and I can go in my shop, which is on the other side of the basement, quite a, quite a ways away, actually, and just upload that file. So, anyways, what we've done now is here we've taken this, this physical part, and we've scanned it, and we traced it, sorry, we scanned it, we imported it, we traced it, we created a CAM file out of it, and we've now sent it to the machine. So this, I'm going to call it a close to this episode because I've ran kind of long. What we're going to do in the next episode is we'll come back and we'll actually cut it out on the 3040 CNC, and we'll actually see the finished product and see how it came out so you guys can get a perspective of how this all works. So I'll tell you what, if you any comments, hit me up below. Don't forget the swag shop in the corner. Also, subscribe's coming up. If you're not subscribed, please do. And hey, catch us in part two when we actually cut this out. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe.